Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. I'm with my good old buddy, the Doctor, the Dre, the Doctor Dre from the OG Fifty Five. How are OG Fifty Five? You. Hey, uh, best place to find me is going to be on Twitter. It's going to be uh, at Vash Sky. Just uh, as it's spelled right there at the bottom of my uh, avatar right there, or, or camera, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Just go ahead and type it in the Twitter, it should pop up. Uh, and uh, as I tell people all the time, as Christine Waysense McCarthy would say, for all the robust discussion, you can head on over there and uh, and reach me. Uh, and if you want to go ahead and see me, well, it's going to be on uh, the channel that I am usually am on. Uh, it's going to be Orange Grove 55 on YouTube, where you can find uh, shows like uh, like uh, our buddy George, our Disney Family Man 23. He has his own sister's corner. Oh, yeah. We cover all types of uh, entertainment news over there on Orange Nerd. We obviously cover theme parks as well, just like our esteemed wizard here, but more from a Disney perspective. And uh, you can go ahead and find my show, which is uh, Freshly Squeezed, your source for juicy news and info, squeezed fresh right from the Grove. Now, to com commemorate the occasion... Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't play this clip for you, so, Wizard, it's all yours. Love it. We love it, and, you know, shout out to Universal, because they, uh, what should we call it? Violet Knight has hmm, almost half the whole gross of Strange World, so good job, Universal. Uh, uh, yeah. Our Christmas movie is about to be an animated movie. Uh, yeah, I think <laughs> I think everything is about to be an animated movie right now. <laughs> I think, uh, oh man, what is it? Uh, 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 what, what are the movies that are out right now? Yeah, well... I, I think everything is about to bleed out <laughs> animated film. This is, I mean, I will say, uh, Wizard, I was talking to uh, my, my 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 dear brother, my um, just, uh, you know, uh, host of the show at, at Orange Grove 55, the esteemed OG. I was talking to him over the phone about this, and I was like, man, they're really about to lose their, their shirts on this. I mean, back in the day, right? I remember this, Wizard. I remember when Mars Needs Moms came out. Do you remember that movie? It was kind of a. Um, oh wait, it was, sounds kind of familiar. Yeah, so it sounds kind of familiar, right? Um, so, uh, what is it? Oh, the director for Back to the Future, Robert Zemeckis, actually had this idea of this this kind of like motion capture, but like digital, right? You know, and he could interpolate performances um, into the kind of the digital realm. You know, it, it kind of didn't get past the Uncanny Valley stage for me, and I think that's why a lot of people didn't actually see it, but Disney invests in him, they invest in this technology. It was a $140 million film back when it came out, which was, you know, I think it was more than 10 years ago now. Um, This was a, this was a, a, a very expensive film for the time, all that. It made only $39 million at the box office. It was the biggest flop that I can really uh, think of in terms of in terms of Hollywood, a modern day flop. And that hurt the company quite tremendously. Well, guess what, folks? This uh, strange world is uh, budgeted at $180 million. And I, I honestly don't know if it's going to make over what Mars Needs Moms did back when that came out. And that means this might be one of the biggest flops of all time, um, <laughs> which, which you know, you're going to have to compare it to Lightyear and kind of have to see. We're going to have to have a box office bomb off to see which one's worse. But clearly uh, the company's films, whether they come from Pixar or from Disney Animated Studios, are not resonating with fans or audiences. I've even heard, Wizard, people walking out of Strange World after like 10 minutes. Oh, wow. Bad, bad stuff. Um you know, Bob Iger's going to really have to look at the, the look at this stuff. Now, I know he approved some of these projects before when he was the head of creative under Chapek while he was still there. So this is still Iger era stuff, but he has got to uh, wrangle this stuff in and really uh, improve not the quality, but 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 the the connection with audiences. I think that's what's missing. 
Yeah, and see, it leads to, because I, I see all over Twitter, oh, but they didn't market it. They didn't market it. They didn't market it. I'm like, okay, well, and I even made a tweet. I said, okay, fine. Well, you people that say they didn't market it, and that's why it's bombed. Right? Well, then the second weekend should be a major plus, right? Because now sure. you're, you're telling you, buddy, it's out. It's marketed. It's so good that, it's, that word of mouth should just boom, boom, boom. But it drops. Ch- 60 percent in the second oh. week so i don't think oh, I, you can't I didn't get those numbers yeah no yeah dropped 60 percent this weekend uh from a very already very low number uh yes i mean come on the violent night beat it and black panther beat it and actually have other things but yeah i mean the marketing excuse can't work anymore people can't work because otherwise it, it, it would go up <laughs> And Wizards exactly right, right right about that. When you have that big drop off uh, from you know uh, the previous week, especially when it's so low. Now it's not so out of the out of the norm for a big drop off to occur when things are front loaded. Marvel films are notorious for this, right? Because people want to mm-hmm. go and see them. They got to ca- catch up with the saga. They don't want to get spoiled. They very front loaded films. They go in there first weekend. They get out and uh, you, you notice a big drop off. However. Um, because you got that big game opening day weekend, uh, you know, it, 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 it doesn't leg out maybe as much as other films, but it does more than, uh, fine with strange world. I was saying, man, that initial box office performance was so low. If it doesn't leg out, let's say, and, and, uh, get over, you know, uh, uh, or, or if it, if it has a 40% or more drop off, that, that means it's done. It's over. It's gone 60%. That's not marketing, guys. That's a bad yeah. film. And honestly, the cinema score reflects it in this case. The cinema uh, score for animated yeah. films for Disney has never been below an A. I don't mm-hmm. care if it's Chicken Little. I don't care if it's uh, Home on the Range. I don't care if it's Atlantis. Never less than an A. This is the lowest cinema score grade uh, since they have been a c- cinema grading uh, cinema score grading films since uh, Beauty and the Beast. This is the lowest that studio has ever received at a B, and I think that's going to be reflective of how many, how much, you know, legs or performance this actually has over the long haul. Disney's already said that they're putting this on Disney Plus, so they're they're getting out of this real fast, obviously. And I think, mm-hmm. again, this was released as part of the previous management team, right? Kareem Daniel, I believe, and I think he 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 saw the writing on the wall saying. It doesn't matter how much marketing I throw at this; mm-hmm. it will never be as successful as we probably want it to be. So, rather than throwing good money after bad, I'm going to save that marketing budget, keep costs down, and try to consolidate this loss. Which I, I think that was the pragmatic strategy. Yeah, because you know, marketing you know that adds like another hundred million or so to the budget. So, imagine you marketed all that thing and it still did the same box office. Ooh, that would be even worse. Yeah, just just imagine that, folks. I mean, it's already a $180 million production budget. You know, you're going to be spending, I mean, even a light marketing campaign, probably $30 million, probably. So we're up in the 200s already. Do you really want to spend more? Uh, Again, that wouldn't help your case, guys. It would make it uh, far worse because marketing is not going to help you. It it really isn't, not not with this uh, picture. Yeah, very bad. But uh, and I think on Disney Plus it won't do too well either. But no, no, uh, it's, it's not in Canto where it has the songs and rewatchability. Yeah, you know, at least there you know see it for free. But you know, uh, man, yeah, it might be one of those things people have in the background, and the, then they start doing their laundry or or something. <laughs> it might be. And I It'll be relegated so- to forgotten, never heard about status shortly. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Wow. Um, uh, it's bad. I mean, this is, and this, you know, look, these are uh, a big projects for the studio, right? Animated films. I mean, with a traditional uh, uh, live action film, I mean, what are they? they're probably in production development, probably two, three years on average, right, Wizard? For animated mm-hmm. films, I mean, four years, five years, not unheard of, maybe even more. So this was a this was a long process to get to this point. Extremely expensive to produce a film like this, especially under kind of Disney's uh, current structure right now in terms of how it produces films and so forth. This was this was a uh, this is going to be a big loss here, and I I do think even with Iger, there's going to be some changes. Oh yeah, definitely. I think uh, huh, maybe the heads of some divisions will be. Uh... <laughs> out of there you know what i'm saying 
Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 But yeah, but luckily, uh, Six Flags doesn't make movies, so they they can't suck at that. <laughs> but they do have a holiday in the park, and I was there. Right, you right. For inviting me, Six Flags, my friends and I had a good time. For I told them, they kept it's funny that my friends kept asking me questions. I like before we got there, and then I was like, uh, to almost every answer, I was like, well, let's Six Flags. And like, what's that mean? I'm like, you'll see. <laughs> and then they we went in there and had little media badges and little s'mores kit. I did like the hot chocolate. They got a hot chocolate mug. Now in the tasting tabs, six tasting tabs in the mug. You can buy this currently. I think it's like forty dollars or something. Um, same thing with the sip and savior type pass, you know, California Adventure. Same idea. And then see, and then they have all these they're not food booths, they just go to the restaurants and then they have holiday menu items on the restaurants. And then um I particularly so I got one thing because the rest of the menu, I'm a picky eater, so just the rest of the menu didn't look appealing to me. And so I got the barbecue brisket with cranberry sauce. Like, wow, so good. I cannot believe it. It was actually really Ooh, good. That sounds I was like, real good. I wanted another one, and I was actually wanted to get another one. Until they were closed an hour early, I was like, "Oh, okay, I guess I can't get that one." But, uh, <laughs> but um, it was really good. Oh, but oh. my other friends, each one of the things they got from the same restaurant, um, I guess were pretty well, well. Was pretty bad, except for well, one of them came with marshmallows for some reason on top of it. She didn't expect that to happen. They didn't tell her, so she took mm. all the marshmallows off, and then she said it was pretty good. The other people, well, one of them said their deal was okay, and one of them didn't even finish. They took a bite, and it was the, she got the holiday brownie. Which, oh, I see. Which thing, you think brownie would be like chocolate or something. This thing, it looked like a thing of mush. It was very weird. I wouldn't, I like chocolate, and I wouldn't even want to touch that. And I'm like, she took a little bite, and she's like, I'm okay. Like, all right, so that was place number one. <laughs> then we went <laughs> on the park and went to place yes. number two and got... Uh, soup. Um, I think my friend, one of my friends, liked the soup, and one other friend got the butter squash soup, but should taste like tomato soup, which that probably shouldn't be happening. But and she doesn't <laughs> like tomato soup, so she also didn't finish that. And she gave some other friend who loves tomato soup, and yeah, we all agreed that probably shouldn't taste like tomato soup, but that's what it did. And then the other wow, friend, we're really striking out here. <laughs> 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 went to the other place and um what was the other place mac and cheese yeah, yeah mac and cheese because my friend wanted mac and cheese and um she got it and i must say all of the portions were very very tiny like the brisket was like super super tiny i was like that's i wanted another one but um the other uh the mac and cheese it was actually pretty big it was like 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 it was like almost like a Panda Express type of plate, like size. I was like, wow, that's oh, okay. pretty big. Um, she said it was. <laughs> she didn't finish it though because she said it was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> but because they gave it to her in a like a container, she said, mm -hmm. "Good, take this home and fix it." So she took it home and she fixed it <laughs> her own way. Um, oh no! Wow, then, um, this is uh, this is this is you know I. I think Celine Basul, you know, when he talks about these festivals and how they're going to be, uh, you know, bringing guests in and, and they're going to be so happy, with, you know, not with new rides, of course, can't have new rides, but these festivals are going to be so blown away. I don't think uh, getting a meal and having to fix it yourself was quite what he intended there. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was, and, and he was just uh, bullshitting all of us. I don't know. And then went to the last place. Um... We went for the frosty elixir because we weren't sure what that was. So we went and we asked him, what's the frosty elixir? And, well, they said, oh, we ran out of those. So we couldn't get it. So still don't know what it is, but they ran out. I knew it wasn't late. It was kind of early in the night. It was like 7 or 8 or like 7. It closed at 9. The thing started at 5. So, I mean, I don't know how they wow. ran out so fast. Um, yeah, but, uh, the restaurant. When a restaurant closes early, and that that usually <laughs> signals to me, okay, this lighter than a lighter attendance than expected, right? You know, like yeah. Thinking, 
it was, um, Wizard, when you were doing all this, was that what you were finding? Yeah, it was definitely you know, lighter attendance. Even not just me, the my group was like saying, like, wow, there's no one here. I'm like, yeah, you're right. There's it's pretty open the walkway. <laughs> I found it. I I was I has been to Six Flags so often. Well, not really, but more than them. Some one of them hasn't been in like seven years, and then another one hasn't been like since like summertime. So since it was kind of like that for Wonder Woman, I was like. Yeah, it seems like an average amount of people to me, but I guess it wasn't a lot of people because there was a lot of walkways. I wasn't like a universal like today where I got bumped by people or Disney or I'm getting bumped by people. That did not happen. Uh, mm. yeah, that did happen. And the same time, again, always at six sides, the same type of people. You no, know, 90% of them are these groups of teenagers. And I was like, wow, this is, I'm not used to this demographic of people. It looks so weird to me. I'm, I'm used to like adults and children and teenagers, but Six Hatches, it just always seems like there's just teenagers there. I'm like, I feel like I'm a, like in a daycare center. Wow. <laughs> like, 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 yeah. oh. But um, it's crazy. Because then, the, then they started messing around with each other, like, you know, tripping each other and running. I'm like, oh, gosh, I feel like I'm at a summer camp. Uh, I got to get away from these people. <laughs> and one of them was behind, like, some of this couple was, like, smooching right behind us in the line. For one of them was very right the line. And there's here's all over each other. I'm like, oh gosh, and, and then wow. well, yeah, the food was kind of you know I give we gave it a um maybe like a C or a D actually I I give it a C because the brisket the rest of the people probably would give the food an F because they we didn't even know none of us none of us used our all, all six of our tasting tabs. One, because things closed early, and two, because they just didn't like the <laughs> any other food. <laughs> and then a mother per another person, one person has been for seven years, one person went since last summer, and one person never been there because she's not a coaster person. But she's like, oh, yeah, it's free and free food. I'll come with you. I'm like, cool. And she ended the night saying, oh, no, I was halfway through the night. She goes, yeah, Ethan, thanks for the invite. I don't think I'll ever be coming back here again. <laughs> like, oh, my I, God. I what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like. Did, uh, did she pay to get in? No. she the Luckily, the media thing was up to four people. So it was me and three other people. Oh, okay. Because that's what yeah. I'm thinking. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> she was invited. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. as, as your guest, of course, um, yeah, came so on I'll... in, enjoyed some of the facilities of the park, and even she was like, not even for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. None of the, oh, the whole group was like, they we kept saying, they kept saying multiple times, they said, man, imagine the people that had to pay 40 bucks for this because these things are bad. I'm like, good thing we got it for free. I'm like, yeah, I know. Good thing we got, got ours for free. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, yeah, that's on top of like the ticket, a hundred seven dollar ticket. I'm like, yeah, I was yeah. paying for it, and okay. So suffice to say, they they had fun. Well, one person had one person thought. Well, we all had fun being together, but the actual six flags. One person doesn't want to go back. One person likes roller coasters, and she knows knows what to expect. <laughs> Hilarious. Sure. It was my best friend actually. She <laughs> likes um. Bro, this one that went last summer with her boyfriend, mm -hmm. and she was like. Oh yeah, when because the, they kept saying how empty it was. The other two people, and they're yeah, like, right. "No one comes here because it's ghetto." I'm like, "No, oh, well, because you got it." <laughs> she wasn't surprised. She said, like, "Oh yeah, no one comes here because it's so ghetto." And then, but she likes the ride. And then, except on one woman, it's very interesting. It was the third, second, and third person that said this. My buddy SoCal. I think I, I don't know if I told you, but my buddy SoCal pal, uh, Danny, no PJ from SoCal pals. He went on Wonder Woman. It was Danny. But <laughs> he went on Wonder Woman. And halfway through the ride, he said that his restraints started to like, come up. And he actually felt like scared. He was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fall out. So he grabbed on. I guess it latched back on. But Nia and Camilla went on just this last time. Said not that, but something similar as Nia was like, my butt was off the seat. I felt like I, felt like I was going to fall out of there. And so I was like, oh, wow. Are you okay? She was yeah. But I was grabbing on for dear life. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then and then my other friend who doesn't want to come back said, yeah, you guys don't seem safe. I'm like, oh, no, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> but um, well, that's concerning. 
And then several rides were, of course, closed. But not as many as on the app, just about. I'd say maybe seven or eight of them were closed. Oh, but that's, I mean, <laughs> come on. It, it's, it's, it's the coach capital of the world, or, or at least it has been at various points in its history. Um, the, seven or eight uh, rides, it's a lot. Bumper cars were still closed. Uh, <sighs> I, think they, I think they have like 15, 16, 17 coasters, or something like that, right? 20. Oh, 20 coasters. Sorry. Yeah, okay, so I'm I'm like, I'm thinking about statistics that are in my head that a little bit out of date. Sorry. Um, 16, uh, coasters. Ones, though, there's four kitty ones, so 16 major coasters. <laughs> right. Six, okay, okay, okay. That That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 16 major coasters. You have, you know, five, seven of them. I mean, a third? I, that's, <laughs> that's unacceptable. Yeah, that's... um. It was pretty crazy. And then they, um, you know, they have those third party, the swingy rides and stuff. Um, they, you know, they launch you and then you drop into your death. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You yeah. have to sign know, or something. Yeah. My friends didn't know that they were, or the people, the people who haven't been there in a while or never didn't know that those are like third party. So like, you have to pay extra for those. What? That's crazy. I'm like, yeah. It's like some some other thing like that's so cheap i'm like yeah well, some other one and then when we try to go it's 8 p.m when you try to go oh, that's another thing they wanted to go on crazy Anity. okay we're gonna go on crazy Anity and we were gonna go to the you know, ace of clubs and are pretty close and get the food everyone wanted and then that way when they come off the ride they'd meet us and we eat right but <laughs> both things, they right at 8 p.m., Crazanity closed. Like, there were people in line, but they just, like, closed the line. And then mm -hmm. there was no sign, but they got, like, Nia was, like, the first, like, the last person in, like, the first person, last person in there that they couldn't go on. So mm -hmm. they were confused. And then there's a sign saying, this attraction closes one hour before park closing. I'm like, oh, right, yeah. Like, dang it. So then we walked over it. <laughs> To the ASIC clubs, and that's when we saw it was all dark. And then the person was cleaning, and they're like, No, 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 no. When I tried to open the door, I'm like, Oh, okay, so you're closed too. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, then everywhere starts closing at eight. But the park closed at nine. I'm like, Man, if this is Universal or Disneyland, I can walk in the line at seven, at 8 59 p.m., mm -hmm. still get on the ride, even if it's an hour long. Mm -hmm. So disappointing. And then, uh, yeah, then we met up with Ashley Dylan. From Theme Park Obsession was there with okay. Mark. Um, Mark, which is uh, our friend. Mm -hmm. um, he goes by the ambassador. He has Theme Park ERT as his channel. And then we walked past them at the fire at the um, front. And because we all, there's one place open because we wanted to get some banana pudding. And we all walked over there okay. to get some banana pudding. And I was talking with them. I was like, yeah, this is my first time ever at the Holiday Inn. I went to the drive through last in 2020, but I never went to the Holiday in the Park thing at the like, mm. real. And then, yeah, both of them said, I said, yeah, I was really cut back this year. It used to be much bigger and better a few years mm. ago. I'm like, I'm like, oh, yeah, it seems like, because even though, like, the lights, there's, like, lights in, like, four specific areas, but there doesn't seem to be any, um, doesn't seem to be as, like lit up as I thought. I was like, I was telling my friends, I was like, yeah, this place seems more dark than light. I'm like, interesting. And there's like lights in specific areas, four areas, and then, or no, five include well, underground, and then that was it. I was like, it wow. seems like, I feel like it should be more, I feel like Universal's entryway is more lit up than the entirety <laughs> of <laughs> Six Flags. Yeah. I was like, wow. That's so interesting because it's so big. You think you should wrap some lights on. There's no real like shows or anything or entertainment. There's a snowfall that I guess every or well, on the app it said every twenty minutes, but I guess we missed it because I, I never saw it. But um, it doesn't seem like any shows or anything. So yeah, it seems I guess really cut back or it is cut back this year. That's I guess a, that's uh, interesting because I think Salim Basul. Um, you know, I, he he touts these festivals as oh well, you know, we, we we got people coming in, they're 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 coming to these kind of special events that we have, and uh, that's that's how we're generating revenue and, and profit and all that kind of good stuff. But then he's even containing costs on that level. 
uh, which I think says something about this, uh, about uh, sorry, not Disney, but but Six Flags' financial position uh, may not be as stout uh, because of some of these losses that they've been, been incurring. Uh, than Salim would lead you to believe, and you know I, I think a, a major problem there. I, you mentioned the teenage thing, um, and look, I mean, let's be honest. You know, uh, uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain and some of these other uh, parks have kind of catered to teens for quite a while, and now there's this kind of change, this dynamic change that Six Flags is attempting to go through where they're like okay we're going to target families we're going to target people with um you know larger incomes and that's a hard sell you know you you talk to uh you talk about you the experience that you have with one of your friends who said um they use uh they use a specific term to describe six flags right uh, which, <laughs> yeah. you know, some people say it's okay to use some people's not i'm i'm not gonna risk it so um you know it's 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 um it denotes a lower quality, let's say, of an experience, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of like the framework, right? So this mm -hmm. obviously didn't overcome that. And and so it's like, okay, well, you're pivoting away from teens who, I understand you, you want to have other kind of clientele there because teens, you know, uh, historically don't spend quite like a family of four does. I, I, I understand mm -hmm. that for sure. But the, the difficulty in doing that is you have to give an experience that families actually want to go to. And now they've, they're have they chasing this other demo, alienating the one they have. And so now you're kind of getting this kind of uh, this effect where um, you're not making money from, from either side. Um, but now you have supply chain problems, right? We've talked about that at length before on this show. Um, looks like they're still going through that over there, at least in Magic Mountain anyway. Um I will say, interesting to note, Wizard, I didn't tell you about this, but Wall Street Journal re recently ran an article about how Apple w might be switching up its production from a certain country, right? <laughs> Primarily. And, and uh, um, switching up its supply chain in order to uh, make uh, both India and Vietnam bigger players uh, in the game when it comes to the productions of their phones, tablets, uh, electronic devices, and so forth, right? Um, because right now, you know, they, they have, uh, they go through a company called Foxconn for their factories in that said country. And that said country, I mean, just to, you know, put this in perspective for folks, these Foxconn exports of these products that are manufactured uh, in said country accounts for said country's three 3.9% of total exports. That's a huge deal. So oh, yeah. them looking to kind of get out of there, it, I think it's kind of a big signal to suppliers of all types of industry, inclu including uh, those that actually make, uh, you know, parts for attractions, rides, and so forth, that, okay, well, if they, if, if, if this country's government couldn't secure their position and enable, uh, Apple to produce their phones and so forth. And even though it is big for their economy, we don't have a shot. So I think you're going to see more of these companies really kind of pulling out and kind of switching up their, um, their supply chains in order to kind of maybe not have it be so reliant on one country um, going forward. But that takes a lot of time. And, mm. and that's kind of the, the, the trouble that we're going to see for the, uh, uh, for the entire industry when it comes to parts and so forth to maintain these attractions for probably the foreseeable future, which is unfortunate. Uh, but it, it's it's sad to, sad to hear that, you know, they, they invest in these festivals here, omit uh, capital expenditures for new rides, shows, and attractions. Um, otherwise, they go all in these festivals, and they even cut there, and like a lot of your party members, didn't really have the best experience. Uh, that's unfortunate. It was free. Oh my goodness, free! They just popped in there for free, and they still didn't can even pretend that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that stuff. You know, interesting too. You know, festival business is kind of interesting, not just at Six Flags, but it's kind of interesting from what I'm hearing at Disney as well. Uh, uh, we obviously, you know, Wizard that. Disney California Adventure Park has its holiday festival program where they have uh, certain mm. booths uh, very similar to their food and wine program where they have certain booths along the performance corridor and other areas where they sell limited time items, right? Um, 
I've heard those booths aren't nearly as uh, 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 the, the, the lines for them aren't nearly as long as they had been in, in previous years. Um, yeah, I heard uh, uh, my chat. They said it, it seemed uh, some of them were empty, and I know my uh, chat themselves didn't uh, didn't really particularly like any of the food offerings this year. So oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I think Hasten on Twitter, um, mm. he was suggesting that the uh, the lack of emphasis on APs and the priority to other demos of guests might mm. have contributed to that. And, you know, if that uh, holds true, if that theory holds true, I would think that Salim Basul's prioritization of ticketed guests and away mm. from annual pass holders might actually be contributing to that uh, uh, uh you know, a uh, uh, change in mindset regarding those festivals as well, in terms of the lines and so forth. It might be mm. contributing to to Six Flags, um, in a, in a similar way, but obviously more exaggerated. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of that, Ashley, I remember we were standing in line at the first place. Like we stood, like for I'd say at least fifteen minutes. It wasn't a long line. But mm-hmm. we're sitting in 15 minutes in one spot without moving. Like, to the point where everybody in line is questioning why we're not moving. <laughs> like, everybody. I was like, wow. I was like, yeah, good point. We have, because we were talking, 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 talking. To them. And I was like, yeah, we have not moved in this, in this spot. There's three people working. That's three people. And, like, the whole thing, it seemed like, I'm like, the cooking or whatever they're doing. And okay. then, of course, two people were, you know, Checking people out. Yeah, we were not moving. Then we started moving a little bit. But I was like, "Wow, yeah, we were just not moving." I was, it was, I was like, "Then, um, then I, well, same for per- same person said they didn't want to go back. Um, plus someone else in line was like, "Yeah, they should hire more staff here." I'm like, "Man, yeah, they're a little bit short staff." <laughs> I was like, and they're like, "Yeah, that's why we're not moving." I'm like, "Yeah, probably because there's three people in this whole thing." But I was like, wow, crazy. Also Six Flags, separate, kind of semi-related. I saw, well, someone posted on the app that mm-hmm. on New Year's Eve, you're only open till 9 p.m. That's crazy. You better be open till midnight. Who's going to yeah. be open till 9 p.m. on New Year's Eve? That's ridiculous. Really? 9 p.m. on New Year's? Who would want to go New- there? Exactly. They're like, <laughs> they're like, are that's... they not on the fire? I'm like, yeah. I was like, what? 9 p.m.? That's a 9 p.m. New Year's Eve, in fact, let me see. I, I don't think anybody's going to want to be stuck out in Valencia <laughs> um, up until 9 p.m. and then leave for some other fireworks arrangement. That doesn't make much sense. Um, you, know, I, I, the, you, know, the, you know, the one park I think that does festivals the best, special time, special. Not very fun. That's it. That's what I was going to say, that they do festivals outrageously yeah. i mean they cater to uh you know annual pass holders and it kind of it kind of shows that just the menagerie of entertainment that they entertainment op- options that they uh provide for their guests it's just stellar it's you know one of a kind um a, a better uptime i would say consistently with attractions there for sure better mm-hmm. staffing um and the food program i mean it's not spurry farm some of the best theme park food that you're ever going to have and so all of those things combined you know, Six Flags trying to get into that game and trying to, you know, uh, all, while also prioritizing day to get a guest and so forth, it just doesn't quite work, you know? Yeah. Yeah, uh, were um, you able to determine that? It, uh, oh, yeah. Definitely was 9 p.m. I just checked. Oh, jeez. Crazy. I don't know that <laughs> who thought that one. I was hoping maybe that, hoping maybe it's just a typo on the app because, like, that's stupid. Not even like 12. They can close for that way. <laughs> but yeah. It's terrible. Uh, you know, you have I a you know, major. With... Oh, no. I, saying, I fell in love with Knott's Berry Farm during when they're open. Um, I already liked them. I really fell in love with them when in okay. 2020, when they had the taste of Calico, you know, those food stores they're doing, and the rides can be open. And then I had a boysenberry chicken and apple sausage. I was like, I love this. This food was so good. Oh, my goodness. Mm. It was also so good that I spent 30 bucks to get in there and didn't have to pay for parking. I was like, that's nice. And that's why I went back for more of the festivals. I was like, I like this place. Right. Yeah, and no, I, I... I paid a whole ticket because I was like, good job. You, you you make me love you during the pandemic. And I like that. I was like, this is great stuff. 
So go Knots. Go Knots. Fantastic. I uh, know uh, Knots. Knots Berry Farm really kind of uh, kills it at that game. Honestly, I mean, um, like I said, like I said before, their food program is out of this world. Their entertainment program is, uh, you know, and right now it can't be beaten. It's go affordable. Ahead. It's affordable. Yeah, affordable and uh, welcomes families and. Um, they, they've, you know, encountered some trouble uh, throughout a couple of these last years, right, um, mm-hmm. with various incidents and so forth. But they really clamped down on that. And, uh, they're really about maintaining a family-friendly atmosphere. And, and honestly, I think they're doing a phenomenal job over there. Well done to the uh, Nutsbury Farm crew. Six Flags, unfortunately, they're moving to from a 365-day operation to weekends only, except for... Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, uh, you know the, the the busier summer months, maybe even winter months, and so forth. Um, gonna be interesting to see how that all translates uh, because I I suspect they might even cut from from that. I, I I wouldn't put it past them to cutting that from a seven day a week operation to like a five day a week operation or something like that, uh, even in those summer months, which would which would be uh, insane. But it it really tells you the disparity between these two and they're not so far away from each other. So yeah. uh, this, is, this is a fascinating dynamic that we're seeing playing out here. It's crazy. Like it's insane. Look, and here in Southern California, you can't go more than 50 miles without running into a theme park. I'd say, Oh, mm. except, well, except maybe, uh, except if you hit the distance between San Diego and the other one, but Besides that, they're all pretty, you know, you can probably, you hit them pretty close. And they're as crazy, they're all so close, but they're all so different, so interesting, so interesting. They, they, all, they such, all have such different attendance numbers, even though the same pool of people are right there. Oh, that's mm-hmm. crazy, that was, which, which is good, because it amps up the competition. It's not like you're the only dog in town, so you gotta... Yeah, no, you, and, and that is... Up. That makes for a better guest experience. I tell OG this all the time. Competition is a good thing, not a bad thing, right? <laughs> That's why I, I get excited about what the competition is doing because, you know, a lot of times, you know, you, you can't rest on your laurels. Now, Disney can <laughs> uh, longer than most, but even then they have to respond in some in some <laughs> regard if uh, the competition gets a little bit too, uh, a little bit too ambitious, right? And we've seen it before. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's all good, and, and hopefully Six Flags can get there get their stuff together but uh i i i i don't hold that much hope unfortunately because i just think uh salim believes that he's in the theme park business when really he's more accurately in the amusement park business and Mm -hmm. i you know it it might sound like semantics but really there's there's a there's a there's a difference there um you know, there is, but you could make it a thing. And I say this all the time. I think it's really Six Flags' fault. Mm-hmm. To an extent, no, 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 no. Yeah, I guess to an extent, no. Nah. Uh, Cedar Fair is fault, but sure. people think, you know, when I used to go to school and I, and everyone, all my friends, but people are like, ooh, there's roller coasters. You go, you know, Six Flags or, or Knots, and then, no. Where? Other rides are kitty rides or non roller coasters. You go to Disney World. Now, people think, or for theme, they say for theme, you go to Disney Universal, for coasters, you go here or there. You know, I don't think it has to be, oh, I know it doesn't have to be so separate like that. If you look at other theme parks around the world, like Europa Park has some greatly themed mega coasters, but really themed. Fantasia Land, right? Mm-hmm. Has, you know, you know, Nemesis, right? Which is being torn apart, but. Still cool. It's an inverted coaster, and for it's like Batman for at the Six Flags mm-hmm. for people who don't know, but or like Silver Bullet, not Space Farm, but they had inverted coaster, and and all of it. I think Fantasia Land is so kind of creative because they like Sea World. Um, funny enough, have like this height limit, so they have to build everything kind of in trenches and kind of like lateral. Right. But that will stop them. I mean, wow. This thing went through trenches, yeah. rocks. This had a, like a loop over a rock, and they even like themed the track to make it, it look weathered, like it was white, but they painted like it made it look weathered and rusted. Like wow, it looked so. I was like, wow, this is a themed track on a B and M inverted coaster. All right, Taron yeah. is a great example. Taron, yeah. 
thing is there's a large coaster that's layered upon layered and just, you're racing through this ultra themed village i mean that that thing that these two are better themed than some you know disney and universal coasters they're so True. good you know and so that's why this notion that oh big roller coasters you no, no, you can't theme them. That's only for dark rides and family coats. You can theme them if you really put enough effort. And, and you can do a good job. I don't know how much it costs, but you can do a good job if you put in effort. Mm. And those look gorgeous. I'd want to visit them just just to see that alone. Like, the, the rock work. And, like, and it makes the coaster experience even more exciting if you're going through trenches and waterfalls and all that cool yeah. stuff. So if I save Six Flags or anything, but just tried that, even mm -hmm. for just one coaster, I'm sure they'd pull in a lot more people. Just because they'd be like, whoa, look at this. I actually spent some money on this thing. I I don't necessarily disagree, uh, but it's, you know, it's it's tough because, I you know, um, Six Flags has been poorly managed, you know. It, it, oh, yeah, it, it kind of forever right it it was an kind of an independent park it was magic mountain that's what it was mm -hmm. and then it was actually acquired by the six flags brand obviously went to the time warner phase and so on, mm -hmm. so forth right there really has been mismanaged over the years and they they obviously the 90s was the roller coaster wars wars right so they really kind of lead into that and went uh thrill junkie chasing uh while the theme and everything took a kind of kind of a back seat it, the, it's no better personified in Scream, a mm -hmm. uh, a B and M belief suspended coaster, lot. right? Uh, um, right uh, over a parking lot. Floorless. Yeah. What was it? Floorless coaster. Floorless, yeah, floorless. Right over, um, like it, there's yeah. parking spaces on the support. I'm like, come on now. <laughs> they they put it right over the parking lot. Didn't even get rid of the <laughs> white lines. I mean, it, it's yeah. it's it's atrocious. It's tragic and. Oh. Deserve so much better, and they, 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 and and but that's one of the the ways they do it, right? They have limited capital expenditure, where it's like we're just going to get the bare metal, bare metal coaster. We're going to spend ten to fifteen to twenty million dollars per attraction. And that's it. That's as far as we're going, and it's really kind of unfortunate because you see it work in other countries. You see it work in Europe, for example, right? Fantasyland and so mm -hmm. forth. You know why can't you adapt it here? It's um, it's a it's a right. different mind, it's a different game. And it really is kind of unfortunate because I think right now Six Flags is kind of experiencing. It's like, uh oh, we just can't have cheap amusements. We have to give a reason for families to actually visit our park. And sometimes that means a little bit more of an upfront cost. Yeah, you know, and if they, if they, again, and they don't, have to, if they did that, like a really well themed coaster every, I don't know. Three years instead of one year, I'm sure people wouldn't mind waiting the extra couple of years, knowing they get another super well themed coaster, taking a longer time to construct instead of one every single summer. I know right. they wouldn't mind because they're like, "Wow, this is really cool. Oh, I'm, well, this is worth the three year wait. Okay, let's wait sure. another three or four years for the next cool coaster in accompanying land." If they just someone got to come in there. And just start that. Just all it takes is one. You know, you know how they say build it and they'll come, or all it takes is one from the snowball effect. I'll tell you. Take and know the perfect place for it. Viper. Viper is old, it hurts people's backs, it never has a lot. Yes. Take away Viper. That's a big enough plot of land to put a cool coaster, but also a kind of a mini land type thing. Mm -hmm. And that, that's and there's a perfect one to go through jungles and and, and trees and does it can be almost something like cheetah hunt cheetah hunt's very cool yeah you know? yeah the way it swivels through those mount uh, those trees at the end like like your cheetah like that's cool stuff i'm sure people would they would be like wow this is something new wow i think we can wait a couple of years for another uh, something like this it's gonna be great mm -hmm. i think i should be the ceo of six flags <laughs> <laughs> well i uh wizard i gotta be honest with you i think you'd run the uh, operation a little bit better than its current uh <laughs> executive leadership team so right. hopefully hopefully they get their stuff together it's really kind of sad uh to hear the decline uh like like we have like we have seen uh, um they, they have to they have to really kind of adjust that mix you can't 
you can't will it into uh, into existence. I mean, you, you through like forcing it, right? Where mm-hmm. it's like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna target this, and we're gonna change our marketing strategy here. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. We're, you know, we don't have to necessarily invest in the business. We can do it through all these other kind of gimmicks, right? And that's not how that operation works. So you really, if you really want to target families, you gotta target families, and and part of that is going to be huge capital investment. Uh, unless you want to, you know, stick to your stick to your game, which is uh, basically kind of thrill junkies mixed <laughs> in with maybe some kitty coasters. So it's it's a different mindset, different philosophy. Hopefully that uh, very much improves. But I think we should probably talk about our next topic here, which because that also deals with theming. Uh, yes, and theming is the game with this uh, uh, <laughs> uh, theme park proprietor, right? That's Disney, right. All right. Disney they are known for the theme. Lots. They are known for the immersion. All right, Disney. And, um, well, we recently just got an announcement. Uh, yes. Starting. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, was it... oh, yes. January 23rd will be the. Well, January 22nd will be the final day you can ride Walt Disney World Splashy Splashy. (laughs) Now, we need some kind of somber, sad drop for that. I hope you have one. Oh, um, I, I, you know what? I don't. Uh, Oh, no. OG has the one where it's like the small, like the violin, you know, playing. (laughs) Yes, that's the Uh, one. But I... (laughs) I don't. I should have actually gotten that before the show. I mean, we're going to be talking about. Um, <laughs> we're going to be talking about the loss of uh, of of Splash Mountain. Well, you know, you know where, it, you know, the soul of Splash Mountain um, can join maybe the other souls at least at Disneyland, the one next door here. Oh, right, the bell tolls for the original Splash Mountain there. Um, it's going to be joining uh, the Haunted Mansion in terms of attractions long gone, similar to how uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride actually did that uh, at Walt Disney World specifically, right? You have the Toad statue and everything right there. So oh, yeah. unfortunately, Br'er Rabbit might have to be joining him uh, oh, shortly. Poor Rabbit. Um, yeah, so January 23rd, it will be closing and opening and very interesting also. I don't know if it was just they forgot to put it in, or maybe they like, hmm, maybe they have prefabricated sets and think they can do it quicker. But the thing on the blog post went from, I don't know if you noticed, late 24, 2024 to just 2024. So, Interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know. They just forgot to put it in, or if they think uh, maybe instead of but maybe open in mid 2024. I don't know. Well, but the word late was omitted. Uh, but it'll be open in 2024 if all goes to plan. Uh, and everyone's hit. Um, with the, you know, with the whole bunch of mist, it shouldn't take that long to build, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's what kind of scares me. Uh, um, <laughs> how elaborate is this thing actually going to be? Uh, Maelstrom, I think, was under a similar timeline, if not shorter, right? So, uh Maelstrom, like a much smaller attraction. It's that's what I was gonna say. It's a much smaller attraction. So Splash Mountain is absolutely massive, as we know for us West Coast fans. It's even bigger on the East Coast. This thing is a a a just a a massive structure, a massive uh, interior spaces, and so forth. It's gonna be really, really interesting to see how they can actually turn this thing around here. Uh, Um. Uh, look, listen. Especially I, I, it takes as long as the treehouse, right? Or uh, Tron, right? Or, Some people or, actually or said, Tron. "Will this open before or after Tron?" That's was that was really funny. No, I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, so there's uh, some some discussion about that already. Um, look, I, I, you know, I had heard that they were under two different time schedules. To be honest with you, Walt Disney World's Disneyland's. That's why they were kind of hyping Disneyland's uh, uh, for D23 Expo, and that was kind of confirmation to me that okay, Disneyland's going to go down first, and Walt Disney World will 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 join the group some some uh, sometime down the line. Excuse me. Uh, well, apparently, Walt Disney World 
will be starting in January, which was a little bit uh, up further than I thought. I thought it might actually start in March or so after Tron actually opens. Well, apparently Splash Mountain's going down a little bit before then in order to get kind of a, a head start on its uh, refer- w- this this kind of reimagining program here. You know, the, the, the interesting thing about that date, uh, that timeline wizard, how they removed the late 2024 and just went 2024. Mm-hmm. Walt Disney World, I, I, I know for a fact, they do not want this attraction down for very long, right? This is why Jungle Cruise never really went down for its reimagining of its scenes and so forth. They actually mm-hmm. performed all of that work while the attraction was open, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Splash Mountain, they, they can't at all do that, of course, but... It will be accelerated, I think. I think they 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 are gonna you know go go to town on this, uh, probably with a much more significant crew <clears throat> to really change this out on an accelerated time schedule. Whereas Disneyland, I think it'll be drawn out. I think, to be honest, I I, I think it. Sorry, I think it will go down, and it's kind of normal. Uh, uh, maintenance cycle that it does it always goes down Mm -hmm. for the first kind of three to four months of the year i think that will that will uh that will continue here it'll go down at a run of the time it 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 usually goes down and i think it will be kind of drawn out uh and uh will open in late 2024 according to that original timeline at least for for hours while disney worlds might be accelerating only because they can't afford the capacity hit you know disneyland Mm -hmm. You know, you have guests, uh, I, I think uh, 75% of the guests actually come from, you know, within 250 miles away. Mm-hmm. You know that when you take a ride down, hey, don't worry, everybody understands, they'll be back, it's all good. Well, Disney World, you have, you know, vacationers who are, that's their once-in-a-lifetime trip, and, well, they want to go on Splash Mountain uh, when they're actually down there. I know I was looking forward to it myself <laughs> uh, when I was, uh, you know, when, when, when as we we're planning uh, our trip to go uh, mm-hmm. with uh, with George and OG, we were all kind of excited to hit up Splash Mountain uh, as part of our visit there. And now that might not actually be possible. So it, it, it it's mm-hmm. definitely a different dynamic over there. They don't they do not like attractions being down. They don't even like the refurb attractions, to be honest with you, which is a whole other story. <laughs> but, um, no, this this reimagining here, I, I I don't know, Wizard. You know, they released a piece of concept art. What do you think about all this? Hmm. Uh, well, let's see. The piece of concept art, uh, I was glad to see it wasn't a mist. I have the uh, oh, image yeah. here if you want to bring it up. Uh, was it? Oh, yes, there it is. Oh. Um, glad there's critters still involved. Um, it looks like, what was that? It looks like the first scene after the, the Slip and Falls attraction. Yeah. yeah I think. Like I the, think- yeah. Another Tiana animatronic in there. Um, it, uh, but then there's a whole bunch of... I mean, there's some lush landscape. I hope the back isn't... Now, I see a little fireflies. Are those pro- that must be, must be projections, huh? Those fireflies. Um, they could be the effect that Pirates of the Caribbean uses. So... Uh, you, you obviously know the grotto scene uh, mm-hmm. for Pirates of the Caribbean where they had those fireflies in there. Uh, mm-hmm. It's basically just a, a, a very small, tiny little light bulb on the end of a wire kind of sticking up, and then there's a fan that blows on it, and that's what gives the effect of uh, of it kind of flying and bouncing around and so forth. And I think it's got uh, a dimmer function, out, a function a, as well. Um, it might be that, uh, at least in the foreground, but in the in the background, I, I wouldn't doubt if it's actually projections in order to give that kind of layer of, di- of depth. Um, is that which uh, my buddy be... Rabbit right over there. Yes, yes, it's it's a. Uh, well, every that's... time I go past him, I'm like, "What's up, Fire Rabbit?" I don't forget. <laughs> right, right. This seems to be a a rearrangement of the scene that we've been seeing for a while for that piece of concept art of uh, her holding the lantern, right? With Naveen oh. and, and all oh, that yeah. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could see a lot of these same characters. Uh, Louis, the alligator is there, but he's kind of in the water. She's kind of mm-hmm. in this boat or whatever. And you can see those characters kind of in the background uh, of that scene. This seems to be a rearrangement of that. And, and from what and, I have been hearing, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to say, it, the concept is very accurate, at least for Disney World, because you can see the boat sinking in there. So, you know, they're really getting 
all the the touches, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> um very accurate yes <laughs> yes I, I, will, uh, I will i will um yeah that's pretty good that's pretty good attention to detail by the imagineers really getting that, yeah, that really <laughs> real guest experience translating that beautifully no i have heard that these projects there will be overlap in terms of uh concepts and so forth they're obviously there they will use similar audiomatronics for each one and so forth but um because these are kind of different in the structures of these attractions, like the original Splash Mountain was, while there might be some carryover, they will have their unique differences as well. And I think it, it, I think it's reflected here versus the kinds of artwork that we're getting. Also, too, this could just be, which I've theorized this for a while, <laughs> they themselves are developing these plans and so forth and outlining this whole thing yeah. as they're showing the stuff off to the public. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, so they're working on it themselves, and it's like, oh, okay, now we can throw this out here. Um, right? Uh, it doesn't seem to be the most savvy group, let's say, uh, where they where they have all the ducks in a row before they actually show them off. We obviously understand that, like, uh, the original concept artwork that was put out back in the, uh, uh, just before summer of 2020, um, showed a very very different <laughs> iteration of this attraction, uh, obviously, yeah. from the exterior, right, than what we're actually getting. So we know that these things are developing as they're going along here. They're figuring it out. <laughs> and, and I think now they have a a, a, um, a kind of a, a, a real kind of... Uh, there's a finalization here in terms of these uh, these plans. Oh, I hope so. I don't know. So I, I, month. Even with this artwork here, and I'm, I'm looking at it right now, it, it's definitely intriguing. I think it will be a, a kind of a beautiful uh, setting here, but I don't know if it's super exciting. If that makes sense, like, like uh -huh. it's it's like it's not something where I look at it and I go, "Oh, I got to ride that like right now." It's something I look at and I go, "Hmm, that'll be an interesting thing to see." As I'm experiencing other attractions, I'll go on Splash Mountain, and this will be, this will be one of them. I don't know. It just, the the, the I guess the call to action for me is not there, and that's significant because you want people to book vacations based on what they're actually seeing here. And so, if I'm not super enthused about it, again, this is a, I this is a big. There. Yeah. She's oh, yeah. Free. Exactly. She's, <laughs> so I did there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she's <laughs> look, she's a great uh, she's got a great vlogger. I'm I'm actually a, a big fan, but uh, in this case, it is correct. I'm not necessarily super enthused, right? Uh, as opposed to enthused for super enthused, I'm not super enthused about this. And that, like I said, that's significant. You want people to book vacation packages. You want people to spend big money to actually go see this thing, especially with, you know, Epic Universe on the horizon and so forth. I just don't think it's there. But uh, Wizard, what's what's your take on all this? Uh, well, uh, I'm looking at it, and I, I, it looks like Splash Mountain, so it looks pretty exciting to me. Because I'm like, hey, look, there's Briar Rabbit. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't book a vacation for it. But I'll certainly go to see my Briar Rabbit. It's like Briar Rabbit, <laughs> a new human friend named Tiana. Uh, yeah, because look, the trees, that's the Splash Mountain. And the, I mean, there's some, some fireflies in there. But mm -hmm. if you have fireflies to this Splash Mountain, it'll be the same thing. Right. And yeah. there's already a gator in there. Uh, yeah, so it's like Splash Mountain with uh, a Tiana animatronic. And so I'm sure the inside will look great. So I'm, I bet you won't look any too any different, any too different. And it looks like it here. It looks the same stuff, um, which uh, looks like maybe see maybe that's will open in twenty twenty early twenty twenty four mid twenty twenty four. It won't be too different than the rest. They had to be programming animatronics, switch them all around, fix some lighting, and. Uh, mm, then that's it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem super ambitious, right? And there are so many great audio animatronic characters that are that are part of not just Walt Disney World Splash Mountain, but really at Disneyland Splash Mountain, because a lot of those were reused from um, Mark Davis's original America Sings attraction. Mm -hmm. That uh, that uh, you know uh, uh, 
he he uh, worked on as part of the bicentennial celebration uh, mm-hmm. that uh, Disney engaged in uh, back then. So to see a lack of audio animatronics is concerning, obviously, because we I, I'd love for them to u- utilize as many of those original audio animatronics as possible in order to keep and maintain that history. But it doesn't seem that that's going to be necessarily possible uh, here for one reason or another. Um, also, too, we see a new interpretation of Tiana. I I believe we've seen this concept for her before. I, I believe she was one of the... Uh, this particular version of Tiana was part of the concept renderings that they showed off at D23 Expo, so no surprise here. But, um, again, it's, it's a Tiana that we've never seen before. This is a new story. Uh, what do you think of that, Wizard? I mean, I, I've been having this conversation with OG on the channel for uh, uh, for a long time now. There's this kind of gap in terms of expectations of what people kind of expect from a Princess in the Frog attraction and the Tiana attraction that we're actually getting. Uh, what do you have to say about that? You know, yeah, the, I, uh, I'm going to need some good music. I was uh, looking for my original, I mean, my, sorry, my, yeah, Princess and the Frog music, so this original stuff better be uh, good. And, and that, co- correct on that, uh, but yeah. go ahead. Uh, and, um, yeah, man, it's a, it's a good story. Again, the friends on the other side, I, uh, I wish we could have that going up the hill. That's a yeah. good story. I don't know. I don't know about the new one. I don't know anything about it, so I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I wish they used the old one, but, uh, I the new one I, I guess it's good good yeah you know, no, no matter what the story is this is always gonna be uh no Joe Rody did a great job of converting Tower of Terror to Guardians of the Galaxy you know sure you can only see the only Tower of Terror remnants here, here are the homage and the monsters after dark and the building shape you can see oh yeah it looks like Tower of Terror right. The rest of it is, and maybe the boiler room, but the rest of it's like, wow, this is like a brand new thing. Like, whoa, it's, there's no shadow, I feel like. It, people don't go in and be like, oh, this is Tower of Terror. They're like, oh my gosh, it's Guardians of the Galaxy. No. Sure. Here, I feel like even the ride vehicles in Tower of Terror are, Guardians are the same, but they added, they themed them a little better. Yeah. <laughs> no. from the Immediately from the mountain itself, you're gonna be like, oh, this looks so much like Splash Mountain. As I have, Splash Mountain would have cast a big shadow over it. That yeah. no matter what the story of this is gonna be, that you're mentally in, ingrained to think, oh, this is Splash Mountain. But the exterior of Guardians of the Galaxy is so different from the Tower of Terror version. You don't think, hey, unless you obviously went here before, or that's like your favorite ride ever. You're gonna be like, oh, this is Tower of Terror. You're like, oh wait, no, this is Guardians of the Galaxy. It has its own identity. This yeah. one. It doesn't have its own identity. So uh, even the story is amazing. It still looks like Splash Mountain. I mean, the boats are exactly the same. They're in a log. Like, now that. So, so to me, I keep thinking, it's like, um, almost, <laughs> it's funny. It's like, instead of, like, the Adventureland Geals inspired by the Swiss family Robson, this mm-hmm. is like Splash Mountain inspired by Tiana or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No. I. It's. It definitely kind of feels like that for sure. <laughs> Splash Mountain inspired by Tiana. I mean, there. The. There's a great Princess and the Frog attraction somewhere. Like in some parallel universe, it exists mm-hmm. and, and it's fantastic. I, this isn't it, to be honest. I mean, you. You're gonna have people who are going in there thinking, "Oh, we're gonna see Doctor Facilier. We're gonna see Ray the Firefly. We're gonna see all these different things." This well, is gonna yeah, be absolutely well, phenomenal. All die. <laughs> and, yeah exactly right but this is a sequel attraction you can't have those characters you can't tell those stories and you can't remember those moments that you remember that you are looking to see from the film it's interesting uh, on OG55 uh, on uh, the channel that I'm uh, like I said that I uh, co-host with with uh, the esteemed OG for sure uh, we had on a guest uh, her name was Ashton the Slytherin and uh, wonderful girl wonderful gal can't wait to have her back on to talk about some of these things for sure because we had to have an update video uh, immediately on, on some of this stuff because one of the topics that we discussed with her appearance was the topic of this kind of Splash Mountain redo and um, this was before admittedly a lot of the details uh, were kind of uh, uh, they they, they um, uh, 
before a lot of those were kind of announced formally by Disney, but we kind of, I was kind of hearing internally, like, this is how this is going to kind of, kind of go. And so I kind of informed her about that, who she, by the way, was very excited for a princess and the frog attraction for the, for the characteristics that I, that I, that I uh, spoke about earlier, Ray the Firefly, mm -hmm. Dr. Facilier, and so forth, right? She was really, really excited. But when I informed her of what they were going to do with it, uh, her excitement changes. I want to go ahead and play that for you right now, really, really fast Let's here. Do it. Here we go. Ray, and you see like him as a firefly, not like actually as an animated firefly, but actually see him like on the walls, like in lights. Yeah. Like, and like narrating the whole story. And well, then, like, we'll see Louis playing his, like, trump like trumpet. I don't know. I love well, those characters. Well, what if I told you that Dr. Facilier and Ray wouldn't be featured at all? Because oh my gosh, this is no! a sequel attraction. <laughs> I don't want it anymore. Get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of how she reacted immediately upon hearing what this was all going to be about there, right? <laughs> there, there's this expectation gap here uh, that I that I have been championing now for a little while on various channels. You're going to have people that go in there thinking, I'm going to get the movie. I'm going to relive some of the greater aspects of that film uh, played out in front of me in this kind of 3D art form that is, you know, this kind of theme park attraction, right? And... Mm -hmm. That's not what we're going to get, guys. And they even make it clear that we're not even going to get the music like Wizard actually talked about before. <laughs> you know, they are going to have original music. And that was confirmed here again, but this time by Brooke Geiger McDonald, who actually, uh, uh, um, uh, what is it, uh, 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 got the scoop on the story, let's say. Uh, this is, I, I guess... Uh, you know, they, Scott Goose wasn't available at that moment, so they went with her, <laughs> basically, right? And uh, she says here, also new, Disney has shared a new piece of concept art for Chiana's Bayou Adventure, introducing new animal characters playing Zydeco music, quote, a special blend of rhythm and blues that was born in Louisiana. Interesting how they have to actually <laughs> describe what this, this whole thing is. But they're not telling you, oh, this is going to be a rearrangement of some of the music that we've actually heard before. No, they're saying this is going to be new music entirely just for this attraction. And think about it. I mean, some of that, so, some of the songs from, uh, oh, what is it, Princess and the Frog are, are actually really, really good. I loved hearing them originally. And um, we've seen great interpretations and arrangements of those classic pieces uh, in Disney theme parks and even Disney Cruise Line and so forth. I mean, we've, we've, we've kind of had... Uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, a deluge of, of of these of these you know various offerings over the years. These can be performed and done and arranged in in great fantastic ways uh, that breathe new life into them for sure. They're going away from all of that, and this kind of touches on this thing where it's I, I don't know what it is, you know. And I've described this kind of dynamic to to other people, and it just seems like. The Imagineers, the Imagineers working on this attraction, right? They almost have contempt for the IP. They almost have contempt for the Princess and the Frog story. Mm -hmm. And that's why they seem so dead set on getting away from it as far as possible. Mm -hmm. Wizard, is that kind of what you're feeling? Because that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, you know, I don't understand. Uh, like, ah. Uh it's a good story. I mean, they, they spend a lot of it not as frogs. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, and there's a way to tell that story even without making them frogs. What I would have done was maybe you have them as frogs depicted, but then you have them as full-fledged audio animatronic characters, uh, kind of a physical representation of what they're experiencing as frogs represented in audio animatronic form. You know, so it's mm -hmm. kind of like this duality. You still get Tiana. You still get Naveen. Uh, feature in these sequences uh, and you can depict them as frogs as kind of these these small uh, uh, maquettes, right? Uh, but then you could have them depicted in kind of their human form going through the same antics that they would as frogs. I think it could be really kind of fun um, and bring kind of a different uh, uh, energy to that story that necessarily wasn't reflected in the actual film. You can 
you can be smart about these things and do these things in, in a way that makes everybody happy, but they didn't want to go that route. They went some completely alternative route, and now you have this kind of well-meaning attraction, right, where it's like, oh, we have to be authentic. We have to show... You know, 40 different flavors of her hair, for example, right? We have to show, um, oh, we, you know, there's no mountains in Louisiana, so this has to be a salt mine. And she has to have a food co op and all this kind of stuff where it's like, how do we get from the food co op ride? <laughs> how do we get there from the starting point of Princess and the Frog? It just doesn't make much sense. Yeah. And you can also, you know, <laughs> Do it that way as you describe, which is fantastic. Or even just have you know, Tiana and Naveen, if you want, narrating. And they can be in animatronic form in one side, oh, narrating the events of what's happening as right. them as frogs. You know, so that way they're there and they're just, and they're literally narrating. And then you see the scene happening with the frogs to the other side of you. I feel like oh. you know, it definitely worked. There you go. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great and, way of of doing it as well. And I have a uh, hold on. That's yeah. far less yeah. esoteric than my version. <laughs> <laughs> now let's see. Let me, if I can share my screen for a second, I put up a poll here on sure. my YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, I'll stop sharing my screen there. Make it easier for you. Um, okay. You know, no, it's interesting. Please. The <laughs> somebody just pointed out to me because I've seen many many different polls on this and we'll definitely mm -hmm. see yours wizard I, don't worry keep bringing it up but um i saw the disparity in the change.org petitions i guess mm -hmm. <laughs> i guess uh the change.org petition to save splash mountain has uh, many more times the signatures than the actual uh, uh um uh change our org position to change Splash Mountain. So I thought that was very, very interesting. Go ahead, uh, your poll. And that reflects kind of this one. It's only a sample size of 129 votes yeah. on my YouTube channel, which is uh, the subscribers kind of come from all over the place, Universal people, Disney people. Of course. But out of 129 votes, 53% uh, of them said they want Splash to stay. 29% said, heck yeah, I can't wait. 10% don't care, and 8% want to see more concept art. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty big lead over I can't wait. And then, so if you combine all these, let's see, what? 63, 71% are not saying, heck yeah, I can't wait. You know what I'm saying? 10% right, right. don't care. 8% are like, eh, I'm not sure. And the majority of them, of the 129, want it to stay. Um, much concerning. You have these uh, petitions, I guess, and you have 94,000 people who have signed the petition to actually keep Splash Mountain and only 21,000 uh, to actually change Splash Mountain. That's a big disparity there. And this is kind of what we're seeing across the board. It doesn't matter where you go, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's my shad or, or, or other. Except, um, ever, except for maybe Diz Twitter. Yeah. Well, no, even in this Twitter, though. I mean, there are multiple really? polls, even on this Twitter, that are that are suggesting that people want Splash Mountain to remain. Now, you can argue about the the the, the veracity of those polls and so forth. I, I get it. Look, I mean, you know, it's 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 not Elon Musk doing it. Let's say, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, which has a larger sample size and so forth, and there's all kinds of uh, notions with that. But. We're seeing this across the board, and it doesn't matter what venue, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on not, whether it's on these websites and so forth, we're seeing overwhelming support still for Splash Mountain, even in the face of all the controversy that's alleged to have been connected to it. And I I, I can't rack my mind around it, Wizard. We're going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to redo a ride that people don't want to see actually change. At least that's a, that's a popular position as far as I can tell from my vantage point right here. And we're not going to add a single, uh, uh, we're not going to add a single guest's worth of capacity to this attraction. It is going to be the same exact attraction as it was before. And my question is, when you have a, a a business like Disney that is so, let's say, cap x constrained, I'll put mm -hmm. I'll put it like that. Why on earth are we spending? the amount of money it's going to take to actually do this and do this properly, which I have heard that it's, it's going to have a decent budget here. Um, why do it at all? Why, why do this? This doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I, don't, I can't wrap my head around it. I'd rather, you know, 
again, Tiana get her own attraction. Right. Uh, won't be compared to anything or have a shadow cast over it. And then, yes. and then you still spend money to upgrade a splash mound uh, to just fix everything that may be broken in there. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's so confusing. But uh, and these are. It's, uh, I hope it's good because imagine if it gets a lower uh, guest session than Slash Mountain. That wouldn't look too good. And it's it's going to be uh it's going to be a very expensive process. I mean, uh this this has to have a big budget in, in order to change out this this stuff at all because, well, I mean, so Tony Baxter and everybody who actually was a, was a part of the original Splash Mountain team, um, they had a clever idea. It was okay. Well. Our water-based attractions previously have suffered from this kind of this kind of wood rot, where you know they have to kind of go in there every kind of uh, uh, um, early you know spring or, or or late winter or so, go in there and kind of uh, rehab and refurbish these set pieces as part of our big attractions like uh, Small World, Pirates of the Caribbean, and so forth, right? And so it's like, okay, well, in order to prevent that, let's go ahead and make everything out of concrete <laughs> so that we don't have this wood rot issue. Uh, not the worst idea in the world. However, well, whenever you have to change things, um, it has to be done with jackhammers <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and, and not uh, sledgehammers, you know, and not, not, uh, not pickaxes or, 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 or the various tools that you actually use to deconstruct uh, certain set pieces uh, that are made out of wood and plaster. So uh, because of that, this is going to be expensive just, just on that basis alone. Uh, it, it's not going to be an easy change out. And I, I just wonder if the effort could be better applied somewhere else. And like you said, Wizard, the Tiana story is so good. The Prince and the Frog story is so good. It really should have its own attraction. I really do think um, it could maintain a, an attraction by itself. You could add the capacity to these various parks, and people can have their cake and eat it too. But Disney is uh, just dead set on not doing that. And to me, it's just like how how much money are we going to throw at this to attempt to be this kind of I don't know. Southern California minded good neighbor as Bob Iger kind of uh, um, <laughs> iterated at this um, this town hall recently that he had. It just it just doesn't quite make sense to me. Yeah, ah, oh, very strange. We'll have to see. I guess we'll have to see in uh, just a couple of short years. And, wow, that's gonna be quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Mr. Gray, it was great to have you on. Absolutely. Thank you well, so much, uh, Wizard. Everyone uh, find you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, the best place to find me is going to be at uh, Vash Guy on Twitter. It's right down there, just like it's spelled. Go ahead and type it in, and I should pop up uh, um, uh, prominently, hopefully. <laughs> uh -huh. I, last time I checked, still popped up, still good. So we're good there. Um, and you can go there for all the, uh, as Christine Waysens McCarthy would say, for all the... Oh, robust discussion right there right uh was beat me to it there and uh, yeah. if you want to go ahead and see me well it's going to be on uh, orange grow 55 the youtube channel where you can find shows uh like citrus corner with my buddy george where we talk about uh florida uh, uh based attractions and so forth and what's going on with the company in in uh uh the sunshine state uh you, you can go ahead and uh, find uh, my buddy, my 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 brother, my my co-host, Orange Grove Fifty Five himself. You can find shows like Orange Nerd and and his original uh, that the channel is known for, Orange Grove Fifty Five. And you can find my show, Freshly Squeezed, your source for juicy news and info, squeezed fresh right from the Grove. So please, I implore you, subscribe to this channel, Theme Park Wizard. Wizard does phenomenal coverage in all things. Uh, you know, Universal, Disney, Six Flags, as we talked about before, uh, Knott's Berry Farm, he is a theme park connoisseur for sure. Definitely give him a subscribe. Uh, doing brilliantly, by the way, and, and uh, uh, when it comes to the analytics of your channel, by the way, you just had a, a really great short that just took off. So congratulations oh. on that front, sir. Please, get, get this man subscribed. He deserves it, for sure, for all the hard work he puts in every single day. Um, and, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, hey, go over to uh, Orange Road 55, subscribe to that channel as well. Between the two of us, you'll have more content than you can possibly <laughs> absorb. So, um, 
Hey, and I, I give my too. full endorsements to both. Oh, yes. Likes are not endorsements. Yeah. yeah oh, that, yeah. That, yeah that, that's true. Right. Uh, Wizard, yeah. you're right about that, right? Yeah, you read my uh, my bio <laughs> on, my, on my page there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> likes are not endorsements necessarily, right? But yeah. you should like you should like these videos, you right? Should you, like should, the you should video. like them. It's, it's good stuff. Yeah, I had to I had to actually put the, I put that on just to just to give you some our viewers some of the backstory there. I put that on my bio <laughs> to to denote that look, listen, just because I necessarily like the tweet doesn't mean I necessarily endorse everything that's part of that, right? I don't want to be lumped in with uh with, with various groups. Sometimes I'll like them just to save them so I can refer to them on shows like this <laughs> uh when uh when it when they're most appropriate. So that's why I say like the endorsements, but you you should endorse this one. Give it a like there. Uh, Give it a like, there. a subscribe, and as always, have a fantastic day.